In medieval times, there were no modern conveniences like turning up the heat on a chilly winter evening. Actually, you were lucky if the four walls of your crudely constructed home did not suffer from severe draft or damp when seasons changed to the harshest one in the northern hemisphere. Commoners living in the Middle Ages dealt with various threats like illness, starvation, and famine, though death from exposure to winter's worst weather was also a constant threat. So, how could you keep warm without central heating or furnaces? Also, how would you obtain food when crops could not be grown? In other words, what did households do to survive a medieval winter? With the beginning of the Little Ice Age around the start of the 14th century, winters became colder and more treacherous in Europe, particularly in the northern regions of the continent. When the medieval warm period ended in the latter years of the 13th century, mild winters of light snowfall became a thing of the past. Extreme cold weather became more frequent during the Little Ice Age. This made survival in one's shelter a battle to preserve household warmth. For commoners and peasants in medieval times, houses were constructed on earth mounds for warmth. The exterior structure was often made from wood or wattle, which was poles interwoven with reed or branches and usually covered with daub. There was no modern insulation to retain heat, so the elements would be felt within these structures, especially in times of severe cold. However, during construction, some households thickened walls by using clay or hay to help keep warmth inside. In addition, rooms were made much smaller than today to help conserve warmth. As for covering windows against the elements, most made do with paper, branches, and whatever else they could find. Those more fortunate had wooden shutters to help keep out chilling cold. Wealthy households used stone or similar durable materials to build their homes, as well as glass for window panes. Though these homes were still quite cold, with small comfort from the fact the wind could not come inside. To generate warmth inside these homes, a fire pit or hearth was centrally located for heating and cooking. Tables for eating and beds for sleeping were placed nearby for comfort. Smoke would be vented outside by a hole in the roof, though this created a smoky situation as well as allowing cold inside the home. Portable heaters, whether braziers filled with burning coals or pans on a stand, were also used, though this was a dangerous method to generate heat. Numerous home fires would result from using portable heat sources when left unattended, causing home destruction and death. Another inventive source for heat came from housing livestock inside adjacent rooms or areas. That is, if they were not already slaughtered to provide food. Their body heat would be greatly appreciated, even though the noise and smell would be minor inconveniences. Speaking of body heat, the clothing people wore was very important for retaining body warmth. Layering clothing certainly helped, as well as wearing linen or cloth undergarments beneath the outer layers, which usually consisted of heavy wool. Wool clothing made by women was vital to surviving the winter, and the labor to produce and spin the wool by housewives deserves mention. Care had to be taken with overexertion while wearing these layers during winter time. If one perspired too much, they would take off the sweaty undergarments to dry while their body cooled down. Afterwards, they would dress again in the dried underclothing. Wealthier classes possessed fur-lined coats of ermine, sable, and squirrel, while commoners used rabbits or lambskins for similar effect. Though commoners needed to ensure they did not poach these animals, and that wearing their fur was not restricted by prevailing laws. On the coldest months, even outdoor accessories such as boots, scarves, gloves, and cloaks were worn indoors to deal with the lack of heat. Bricks or stones could be heated in a fire, then wrapped in cloth to help provide warmth during rest, as well as sleeping close together by sharing beds for natural warmth. Wealthier households used four-poster beds with curtains to keep warmth inside their sleeping area on winter nights. Living in medieval times meant agriculture was the primary means to support a household, though how could you grow food in the bleak winter months? This is why food preparation and storing enough provisions for winter, like firewood, was never far from a household's mind, whether farmer or nobleman. If food and other necessities did not last to late winter or early spring, your chances of starvation increased dramatically. Facing that unfortunate situation, if there was no charity from neighbors or a local noble, you were living in certain danger. When it came to nourishment, autumn food harvests were preserved to eat during the winter season. Harvests were gathered before Michaelmas in late September. Grains and cereals would be dried and sorted, then stored in clay or ceramic pots for pottages and stews. Bread, a staple of all classes of households in medieval times, would require these grains as well as ale. Fruit would be dried or sealed in honey to prepare for winter. White meats, the term used for dairy products like milk by medieval peasants, would be provided by chickens, cows, and goats. 
Those that were fortunate to have slaughtered meats preserved this nourishment for winter. Meat would be placed in a wet brine, which was a mixture of water, boiled in salt and herbs. Then this meat would be put in a new barrel of dry salt for final preservation. When it was needed during the winter season, it would be rinsed and used for cooking. Smoking meats would also be a common preservation method. Smoked and dried meats like beef and ham could last quite a while over the winter season. In the Middle Ages, winter was related to old age, death, and poverty. This association came about because of the natural processes which occurred during wintertime. The hard possibilities of this season included heavy snowfall and massive snowdrifts that could trap people in homes and blanket whole towns and cities. If the snowfall was heavy enough, houses would collapse on their occupants due to the weight overhead, making homes a tomb for their occupants. Nevertheless, even during medieval winter, life was not all about struggle. With the end of grueling long hours of outdoor labor, more time was available while staying indoors for entertainment. Outside, winter evenings were long and dark, making boredom near unbearable at times. Therefore, storytelling, doing crafts like wool spinning and playing board games like chess or dice games were some activities used to occupy people's time. If one did venture outside, early skating with polished horseshin bones or wood, snowball fights and sledding were common activities. For the wealthy, a popular outdoor activity was hunting for wild boar, which combined sport in the prospects of capturing food for the season. Unfortunately, with realities of lower temperatures, the risk of illnesses like pneumonia increased dramatically inside these cramped living quarters. To lessen the severity or possibility of illness, hot meals like soup and pottage helped to keep people warm. Limiting one's time outdoors was a practical way to lessen the effects of winter weather. Medicinal herbs were also picked from monastic gardens to prepare for the threat of illness in winter. For instance, hyssop, a plant which was harvested in fall for medicinal purposes, was used to treat phlegm, bronchitis, coughing, and similar conditions. Today, people enjoy many winter activities when snowfall comes, though having food and necessities at our disposal has made wintertime pleasurable compared to the Middle Ages, when this season was truly a time for survival. In general, Northern Europe was better able to cope with a harsh winter than their southern counterparts due to their experience and equipment. Though looking back to the effort required to survive a medieval winter, one cannot help but admire their courage, labor, and dedication. Thank you for supporting us at Medieval to Modern. Please be sure to watch another episode shown at the end of this video. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. I wish you good tidings as we remember that sharing knowledge has been a noble deed throughout the ages.